the Bridge Multicultural and Advocacy Project, which is a nonprofit organization, arranged their annual United Interfaith Celebration, celebrating Passover, Ramadan, and Easter. A large number of city and state officials attended. The founder of the Bridge Multicultural and Advocacy Project, Mark Mayer Apple, assembled a group of community activists to discuss the need to develop a location for multicultural advocacy in 2013. This building is where all religions and ethnic groups can work together to address the needs of their communities. They stand by a message of unity and action and resonate around New York State and the nation. Please watch a special report. Allah the Almighty, Allahu Allah, protect me and guide me, Allahu Allah, oh, to your love and mercy, Allahu Allah, ya Allah, don't deprive me, Allahu Allah, from beholding your beauty, Allahu Allah, oh, my Lord, accept this plea, Allahu Allah. It's great to be here with Councilwoman Mercedes, uh, just elected about a year ago. About a year and a half. Year and a half ago, elected to the city council. But she's a very different politician than other political leaders. She had a life before she entered politics, working in healthcare, working with very, very sick people, and she understands the issue. And in the city council, she was appointed to one of a committee that's very important at the bridge that we're gonna be working on, and that is healthcare. There's nothing more important than healthcare. So it's so exciting that the councilwoman is here with us tonight as we celebrate all faiths. All faiths. Easter. That's right. Passover. Mm -hmm. Ramadan. Ramadan. Yeah. And it's so nice to be with you. Thank you for inviting me here, Mark. It's a privilege to be here. I'm honored. And what I think about um, all the different celebrations that are going on around our, our community, as a council member representing 46th District, I have everything celebrating under that umbrella of 46. At the end of the day, we are one. Um, we can celebrate um, Passover, Easter, Ramadan, but at the end of the day, we are one people fighting for the same common interest, which is having a life, have a safe life have a family that they can go to school, they can have education, they can have their street clean and safe. And that's all we want. We want a community where we can live, work and enjoy. And I'm happy to be part of every celebration like this morning. Tonight is important because before Passover, it's before um, uh, Easter Sunday. Today, this morning was Palm Sunday. And uh, it's important because people are taking out times from the busy schedule. And we're trying to reaffirm our belief in the human race. And tonight shows us how the whole world is a bouquet of flowers. Different people are different flowers. And we take all the flowers together and make one beautiful bouquet of roses. How beautiful it is. And this reinforces our belief in the human race and leads to peace, unity, and love. 
Therefore, it's so important to be here tonight. Uh, so Senator wants to extend her thanks, and especially to you for being the person that actually brings the community together. You are having an initiative in which you are letting people know that we are all one by having all of us come together today for this wonderful celebration. And you're just letting people know this is New York, and this is a safe space, and what you're doing is bringing the community together. And we just want to thank you so much for what you've done and what you're continuing to do to make us all come together as a family. You know, the just the name of the bridge for us, it's what JCRC is about. It's about making that connection, the relationships, to see a room full of people, different backgrounds, right before Pesach, during Ramadan, with Easter coming, just bringing people together. It's exactly what JCRC is about and why, why the partnership with the bridge is so strong and so important. Atiyah Shinas, who is the Muslim liaison uh, to the mayor. Uh, she's been the founder of PASO, which is a major Pakistanian uh, organization in Brooklyn. And now she moved on and she's working with the mayor. Uh, done an excellent job in setting up the largest pantry distribution in the city. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, thank you so much. It's a privilege and honor to be here. It's a wonderful spiritual and interfaith unity. Thank you so much for your services. You doing a great job to bring everyone together in one table, uh, regardless of religion, ethics, and culture. So I think it's important for us to um, recognize the faith community in New York City. New York City should not be a solar city, but it should be a city more than buildings. And I think that the mayor is clear about the idea of using the faith community to solve community ills and problems. And it, it has always been like that for centuries. When you look at COVID-19 and how the houses of worship came together to really uh, help with the vaccine, help with, with COVID tests, clothing distribution. distribution, clothing after the Bronx fire, um, Rabbi Mendy just did a, a Passover um, um, uh, in Staten Island. Uh, yeah, in Staten Island. You, you can look all over, and the faith community is the one that's driving uh, this idea of goodness, will, justice, and mercy. So it's not dawn on us that the faith community should be highlighted in our administration. But this this partnership between religious organization, you know, it doesn't say anything in the Constitution. <laughs> that we can't be friends and that we can't work together. That's true. So working yeah. together, we have that extra manpower, right. woman power, of bringing in so many congregations and so many groups mm -hmm. into the thing. We're here to present the special award to Sagir Khan for the Kashmir Alliance, doing wonderful work in the community, in all the communities. Thank you very much, Mr. Mark and the Bridge Organization for recognizing me. And I want to thank, uh, it's a great holy month of Ramadan. We get all Muslim, Jewish, and Christian all together. We want to send a message to the world. Let's live in peace and harmony. Thank you very much. This is Yasmin and Dilnozov here with me. And we can be prouder, if there's such a word, to be here, uh, to be part of this amazing event. We're all human creatures. We're all God's creatures. And we absolutely, every single, it doesn't matter what the, what the, what the background we are, we are from. So again, thank you so much for having us. I'm delighted to be part of it. Today, actually, it is my first time participating in the Easter Passover and Ramadan celebration. And as a representative of immigrant community and Miss Immigrant Organization, I couldn't be more taken away for all this experience that we going to be actually three different religions together sitting and eating and uh, spreading the love between each other good evening it's a beautiful thing that uh, mr mark Capel does every year which coincidentally uh the three major religions christian jewish muslim have their holy days uh we are around the corner of Passover, which is a very important holiday in the Jewish religion. Of course, my Muslim friends are celebrating Ramadan, and I wish them Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Karim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yasmin Ataf. Uh, I am uh, president of Yemeni Women Association. This is my seventh year to be part of this uh, event for the Iftar dinner with the Unity in Action, and I'm very glad 
to attend that and support this event. Assalamu alaikum ji. Today we are here to support the bridge to support the bridge and collaborate. We are here to celebrate uh, the, the, all the communities, all the religions, all the different colors in, in New York City basically. I am here with the fight. I have came here for the interfaith of Tari to from the bridge as and we are together with all community. We have one of our new elected uh, councilwomen who's been in office for a year and a half and she has very strong committee in the city council. She's the chair of hospitals. I know she has to leave early. She's been a good friend and she's fighting for the most important thing that our community needs. I know that I'm working with your office to create the diabetes task force and to create an asthmatic task force. And uh, because she has to leave, I'm gonna ask her to please come up and say a couple of words. Let's give her a nice hand, Councilwoman Mercedes Nassi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, with respect to this young man over here, Mark, that always had that vision to put everyone in the same room. No matter what religion, what color, and where you come from, it doesn't matter. This is not only New York City, but this is Brooklyn. Brooklyn, we celebrate each other. We understand each other. And we know that no matter what religion, we celebrate it all. Like this morning, someone asked me, what religion, where you fit into Ramadan or Passover or Easter? I said, last time I checked, I cannot recall. Because my whole thing is about celebrating each other. So I thank you, Mark, for your vision to see all of us as people, as human beings, celebrating and understand that at the end of the day, we call for the human race to understand each other. We pray together, we can have different prayer. We can have different color of skin. But at the end of the day, we in here, not only the New York City, you have the Statue of Liberty that remind us we all came from somewhere. Probably we came yesterday, 100 years ago, whatever it is, we are here for one mission, is to have a better life. My name is Mercedes Narcis. I'm a chair for hospitals committee in New York City. So my job, I represent the 46th district, but I say at the end of the day is New York City to keep everyone in good health. We have a health inequities in our city. We saw what happened. COVID highlighted the issue that we've been dealing with health for decades. Diabetes is one of them. Hypertension. You know, heart disease, cancer. Yesterday, I was privileged to be part of Sloan Memorial, um, um, Memorial Sloan Catering Center that opened a new center in the, our backyard, on my colleague's backyard right there. But I had to come on Nordstrom Avenue and help to, because I was part of Sloan Catering way back in the day because I'm a nurse. Once a nurse, always a nurse. So I have to say hello to my colleagues in the room that's nurses. I see Hannah, so thank you for the work that you're doing. So I thank you guys. Let's pray together. Let's break bread together. At the end of the day, let's be fair to each other. Let's address the inequities that existed in our community, in health, education, housing, environment. But we can do it once we start trusting each other. We can work together and make sure this is a place where we can live, work, and enjoy. So thank you, everyone. Celebrate whatever you celebrate. I love you. Thank you. God bless you. So we had many friends that we part, and we looked up to the JCRC for support, for materials for our program. And it's under, very important to understand that the work of the Jewish Community Relations Council is about the work to unite communities and bring the one voice together. And you've been a great friend to us. So please give him a nice warm welcome to the new leader of the Jewish Community Relations Council, Gideon Taylor. Mr. Gideon Taylor. As you may be able to 
could tell from my accent, I wasn't born in Brooklyn. I was born in Ireland, where there's a tiny Jewish community, one of the smallest Jewish communities uh, in the world, a tiny community. And I've come here, and I came years ago to this with the largest Jewish community. And I fell in love with New York. And I fell in love with the incredible mosaic of New York. And what JCRC does is just to try to support people like you in this room, bringing people together. I come from a country that has known conflict. We have seen conflict. We're living among the most fractured times of our lives. And yet when I look out in this room, when I see the people who come together, who every day do the work of talking, communicating, bridge building, helping people, not just when there's a big thing, but day in and day out, I am inspired every day. And to be here today is inspiring. I thank you for the opportunity to be with you. I admire you and I'm inspired by you. Thank you for being who you are. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Hello everyone. Could you bow our heads just for a moment? I'll say a brief prayer. It's called the Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajeen Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin Rahman Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyyaka Na'budu wa Iyyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Siratal Mustaqim Siratal Ladina Ramta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maqdub Alayhim Wal Adawlin Amin Thank you We're going to start off with a very very special and a highly esteemed public official in New York State that has really worked in partnership with the bridge for many years. Eric Gonzalez doesn't need introduction. He's been a friend, he's been a supporter, and he's been available to this entire community. I don't think there is somebody in this room that doesn't know or hasn't had a conversation with the district attorney of Brooklyn, who changed the office, who made Justice, a top priority as the new District Attorney of Brooklyn. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor for me to be here at the Bridge Multicultural and Advocacy Project as we bring communities together. Uh, you know, our Mayor, Eric Adams, has been talking about the wisdom of bringing diverse communities together and sitting at a table and sharing a meal and talking about it. And I had the privilege of witnessing one of those meals recently. Um, but you know, Mark, through his efforts here, has been bringing communities together for years. This is not the first of these events, um, bringing you know, communities who normally are believed not to be able to sit in peace and, and break bread and eat, but bring communities together and share traditions and culture, share religion, um, and just be one as a community is, is a great blessing for me to be involved in, for all of us to share. And you know, Mark's a humble guy, but we should acknowledge his efforts for many years uh, without funding, Without uh, a lot of self-aggrandizing, he, he built this establishment here and he's gotten us together. And when Mark calls, it's always an honor for me to come. So, thank you, Mark. 
Thank you. And, and uh, as we, we enter this holy week for so many of our religious communities, uh, know that as district attorney, my job is a difficult job. It's to keep all of us safe, but to make sure that we also have fear policing in our communities. And one of the great things that we've been able to do over the last couple of years is to drive down some of the violence in Brooklyn. Uh, but we had seen a dramatic uptick in hate crimes. And it would be remiss of me not to mention that year to date, as we're now in April, one quarter of the year behind us, that hate crimes are down 50% in this county. All right. Wishing everyone happy Ramadan, happy Passover, happy Easter. May you all be blessed and may the Lord Almighty protect us and our families. God bless all of you. Thank you. There is a prayer that we all share. We have all different faiths. Blessed are those who speak briefly, for they will be invited back. And I want to adhere to that blessing. There is a beautiful custom that many of you know. At the Passover Seder table, we take a cup, we fill it, we say that cup belongs to Elijah. When Elijah comes and announces the Messiah, or the Messiah coming again, I'm not taking any chances with this crowd. Uh, so we have that cup filled. However, there are a group of people who have a different tradition. The cup is placed on the table empty. And the only way it's filled is when everybody sitting at the table pours something into it. And maybe that message is for all of us, that the only way we're going to see a cup overflowing with love and respect is if all of us contribute to the cup. So Cardinal Dolan will tell you that Good Friday does not conclude the festival. Easter concludes the festival. Passover does not conclude when you taste the bitter herbs. It's when you eat the meal and sit together. And Ramadan does not end with the fasting. It's when you sit down as one family and enjoy iftar. So all of us come here tonight. We are many backgrounds. We are many beliefs. But you know, there was a ticket years ago when you would buy for an event, and it would say very simply, no good if detached. We are not good if we are detached from one another. Let us continue to pour into that one cup, because we all belong to one family. Amen. This is the fifth year that we're doing this uh, joint Passover, Easter, Ramadan event, after dinner. I can't tell you how much I feel blessed and honored to be part of this organization, The Bridge, together with our President Jean Bernstein, together with our staff and volunteers. It's a very special honor for me, the child of a Holocaust survivor, seen pain in the world, seen hunger, but it's a payback. When you can have the ability to stand upstairs every day, waiting for the phone to ring, people bringing packages and goods and pampers and clothing and food to be distributed to shelters to so many thousands of immigrants that need a coat, that need a sweater, they need a pamper, they need something to survive the winter and this coming months. And we're so pleased to have Pastor Monroe here who works directly with the mayor of the city of New York, Mayor Adam Adams, as the head of the Office of Bay Haste faith-based community partnership. And we've worked together so much before, and we're looking forward to a new year, a good year, and a healthy year. So please welcome Reverend Pastor Gil Monroe. Thank you so much, Mark, and good evening to everyone. Um, I don't know if you saw the daily news today, but um, again, the mayor is on the front page of the Daily News talking about his faith. And I think that is important for our city and every elected official or anyone who has anything to do with bringing people together understand that people in this room is united and not detached by their faith. 
Um, so it's important. We just don't want a city that is a soulless city with bricks and models and buildings. But it's a city that is built with heart and people who have faith and structure and beliefs and moral understanding, togetherness, love, compassion, and care. That's why the city in its budget, as Dr. King said, that the budget is a moral document. Give to nonprofit organizations because we know that government cannot solve all of the ills of society. And so today we are delighted to be in this room because we know that the people in this room has the solutions to the biggest and deepest problems in our city, which is the faith community. And so we are unapologetic about our faith and we are here tonight because we recognize that faith really counts and you count too as well. So thank you that you are in a city that you can openly uh, practice your faith, you can pray, and you can pray with not only yourself, but you can pray with others who believe in different faiths too as well. So God bless you. Have a great Ramadan. Have a great Easter. Have a great uh, uh, Good Friday, glorious Saturday. Since we are reading from the left to right, I'll leave the Jewish community for last and a great Passover as well. <laughs> we have a surprise here tonight. Coming directly from Israel this morning, 6 o'clock, we're joined by somebody who we spent in 2018, Councilwoman Farrell Lewis, and 18 of us, mostly Haitians, Muslim community, we did a multicultural trip to Israel. And then we were joined at the King David Hotel with a beautiful ceremony of beautiful songs. So will everybody join us together as we hear Cantor Mayor.
Ramadan Mubarak, I hope everybody had, who observed had a good Shabbos and a happy Palm Sunday for those that observe. I'm Council Member Farrah Lewis, representing the 45th Council District. Let's give it up for yourselves for being here this evening for this interfaith event. So I just want to thank Mark, who is the founder of the Bridge Multicultural Project. So Mark, personally, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, for welcoming me with open arms. Um, when people in my community didn't respect me, didn't love me, and didn't accept me, you did. And I want to say thank you. And I also want to thank the AAPI community that's here. I see Atia here with her whole team, Yasmin, and everyone. And I also want to thank you. Because when people from my community treated me a particular kind of way, you welcomed me with open arms. We're sisters, definitely. And this event is so important because it brings together all walks of life from different parts of our community. Everyone from every part of the district, all religions coming together to unite as one. And it was an opportunity not only to unite, but to educate ourselves on our religions, where we come from, the different foods we eat, and just how we do what we do. Mark actually produced a, a documentary and I funded the organization to create what we call the Anti-Hate Crime Task Force. And it was an opportunity for us to showcase how we can come together but also combat hate crimes. So whether if you're from the Pakistani community and Bangladeshi community and you're experiencing hate crimes or if you're from the Jewish community or if you're a black woman happen to experiencing a hate crime, it was this task force that got together to combat those issues. And it was all led by Mark Appel. So I want to thank you for spearheading all of this. Thank you for welcoming all of us with open arms. I hope you all could join the efforts and what the bridge is doing. And I also want to thank Jean Bernstein, the new president of the bridge. Oh, there he goes. Say hi, Jean who's also supporting Mark in efforts and making sure that we further continue to strengthen this community. I want to say thank you. Um, I hope you all have a blessed Holy Week. Continue to have an easy fast for those observing Ramadan and happy Passover to all those that, that observe. God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. Salam alaikum, my sisters. How are you? Um, good evening, everyone. Um, Council Member Lewis, my colleague. Love you, sis. Um, so, just a few words I wanted to share today. Thank you, Mark, for having this. But as we celebrate these holidays together, let us remember the importance of compassion, empathy, and understanding towards one another. Let us come together in solidarity and support and strive to build a more inclusive and equitable community. In the spirit of these holidays, let us reach out to those in need, share our blessings with others, and work towards a brighter future for all. May this celebration bring us closer together and may we continue to build bridges of understanding. You hear the word bridges of understanding and respect. Across all cultures and faith, thank you and happy Ramadan Kareem. Passover and happy Palm Sunday to all who observe. Mark, thank you so much for this platform. And yes, a lot of money, a lot of investment. We always, I believe in investing in young people. So therefore, that's the foundation and I will continue to fight and make sure that I fund young people in doing so as the chair of education. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to be together as sisters and brothers, right? We thank you, Mark, for bringing us together in this moment. Uh, I just want to bring greetings and celebrate this time and this season as the various faith traditions come during this special week. I believe this week is significant because it's the time when our various faith traditions come together to recognize and realize the potential we yet possess. Thank you, my dear brother, for lifting up that uh, song that carried us through moments of challenge. Let us engage in this week with hope, affirmation, and strength, knowing that what we possess right here on Flatbush Avenue is holy ground. Let us walk with assurance in this moment. Let us overcome together. God bless you. God keep you and strengthen you today. God keep you and strengthen you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is such a 
a pleasure to be here this evening. And as we come this evening, I want to appreciate Mark Appel for having gathered us again on, for this time of unification. I think it's so important, even in this time, at this point in our um, cities and our states and our country's history. As we gather today, I am struck by the diversity that is in this room. That even though we come from different backgrounds, different religions and cultures, yet we are united by the desire to celebrate and honor the significant observances of Ramadan, Passover, and Easter. And we know that these observances are not just about the practices themselves, but about the values that they represent. That they are about coming together and showing compassion for each other and celebrating what I call a shared humanity. And so we thank and we are grateful and appreciative to the fact that in this room, even though there is diversity, we understand that we can live here knowing that there can be unity in the midst of diversity. <laughs> Mark, and we wish everyone here a blessed and a meaningful observance of Ramadan, Passover, and Easter. I'm not sure I, I sense you're going to do this song. All right? Come on, let's do it. Yeah. One heart. Let's get together and feel all right. Can everybody sing one love? One love. One heart. One heart. Let's get together. Let's get together and feel all right. Let's do it one more time. We say one love, one heart, one heart. Thanks and praise to the Lord, and I will feel all. Right. Let's get together. Let's get together and feel all right. My next speaker is not only a rabbi, not only is the head of the largest rabbinical organization in America. Not only is he a head of Staten Island C Council of Jewish Organizations, but he's been a personal friend who I can call 6 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night to thank him for the advice and the guidance. Also a prominent attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rabbi Mendy Mraznik. Thank you, Mark. The clergy tonight picked on a very important point. This week, but you know, Chazen, the wonderful cantor who sang with his God gebench the stimme, with his voice given, uh, blessed by God, forgot one line in the We Shall Overcome song. If you listen to Pete Seeger's version and how Joanne Baez so brilliantly explains the song of We Shall Overcome, there was a chorus they invented in 1964 in Salem, when the young people of that generation, and my father was in Salem in 1964, child Holocaust survivor, who's turning 92 this year. And my father then said, if a young man can go overseas to Vietnam, and he comes back to the United States, and he's told, boy, back of the bus, where is the justice? My father remembers the DP camp after World War II. And I always talk to my landsman, my breeder from another mother, Rabbi Potasnik. The African-American soldiers who were in the DP camp and the compassion they showed in the nurses to these war survivors. And you're telling such a wonderful young man by a parade going back of the bus. Where is the Yaisha? Where is the justice? So when we sing we shall overcome is very important. The, the line that says, we are not afraid today. And that's what Passover Ramadan Easter stands for. We're not afraid today. My dear friends, 
I'm going to conclude with one concept I stole from Rabbi Joe. Rabbi Joe, I'm going to pick on... <laughs> I'm going to ask you for another smicha, Rabbi Joe. Rabbi Joe said a concept in homiletics which is very deep. He said that the Seder table is not complete until we get together as family. He also said that we have the bitter with the sweet. And the rabbi points out the contradiction in his sermon where he states, how do you reconcile the bitter with the sweet? And the good rabbi says, that in order to enjoy the Passover Seder, I'm going to embarrass you. You have to be a Reverend Dr. Terry Troyer. You have to make certain that when you sit down to that Seder with your family, the indigent, those in poverty can enjoy the Seder as well. How can you say, Bless art thou, o Lord of the universe, and enjoy his bounty when your neighbor suffers from the shackles of gun violence? When your neighbor suffers from the shackles of domestic violence? When people are shipped across the United States? No issue on discussing, debating immigration is not my point. But how do you take a person, throw them in New York State, turn them back on the city, give us a bill to pay, and create more poverty? How do you do that to the people of the city? Look at the clergy here. I told Pastor Gill this morning, could you tell me a night you and Rabbi Joe go to bed before 2 o'clock? When? Pastor Hines, the God Squad. 24-7. You live with the phone. They knock on your door. When you're giving a sermon, they bother you by the pulpit. That is why we say, in conclusion, Zechel et Sias Mitzrayim, every day, twice a day, we remember the exit of, uh, from Egypt. And, and, by this, and by the Kiddush, we make the prayer of, 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 over the wine. We remember the exit of Egypt. And the Seder night, we go in great detail in Agada on the exit of Egypt. Why? Because the wine is the smallest produce, but yet the most powerful when it transforms itself. And when human beings walk together with the concept of remembering who you are, what you are, where you came from, there can't be any injustice. And that's Mark Appel. That is my dear colleague Gideon Taylor that's here at the Gideon, the JCRC. But you see to my left, you see to my right, the ambassador, all these people make it happen 24 7. And remember tonight, when you drink that wine, it's the wine of strength, the wine of harmony, the wine of justice. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you so much, Mark, Mayor Apple, to bring all of us together in a one table. Look at the hall. Wow, that's the beauty of New York City, that everyone is a table, the Muslim, Jewish, Christian. This is the diversity. This is the interfaith unity. The faith, I believe the faith is a light that endures in the light, in the darkness. So we believe in the faith, interfaith unity is crucial for well-being of New York City. This is the beauty of New York City. We are come from different faith, different culture, different religion, but we learn from each other experiences. We learn from each other differences. So this is the beauty, this is the makes great our New York City. So thank you so much, Mark and Mary Apple, to bring us all united and create uh, you are doing a wonderful job. You are destroying the barrier and you are bridging the bond of love, bond of respect and bond of unity. Thank you so much everyone you are doing. I am just feeling here that everyone is reciting and singing the song, the religious song. So I am going to do something special here too. So I call my religious and Pakistan humans come together we can sing a little bit too. Come together. Because it is time to show our spirit, our strength. So as a Muslim woman lives in New York City, it's, I'm committed to work towards the 
for our women to uh, work for them to upgrade and to work for uh, their progress and community work too thank you so much we came from diverse background and culture and beliefs however we all united by common by common purpose to celebrate this month and now for that special ending for the night join us together in the middle of the floor for a beautiful rendition of a ancient hebrew song called kiva moed means all holidays bring love and unity to all Yeah. 